Right, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name's Tom Hughes. Um, I've been involved with OpenStreetMap for about nine years now. No, it's, it's, the, the switch is dodgy or something. It keeps turning. How's that? Right. Is that better? Excellent. Right, so my name's Tom Hughes, and I've been involved with OpenStreetMap for about nine years now. Um, and for eight of those, I've been helping look after the servers, and uh, in particular, the, the code that sits behind uh, the OpenStreetMap.org website and that runs everything you see. Um, and that's what I'm going to be talking about this afternoon. So, first of all, this is a, a quick overview of how the servers that you're talking to every time you go to openstreetmap.org come together. There's, oh, hang on, there's three front-end servers. Uh, there's just round-robin DNS controlling which of those that you hit whenever you go to the website. They're all running Apache with Passenger to talk to our Rails code. Then there are the heavier requests. We then proxy from those to these three back-end servers. Uh, again, they're running Apache. Again, they're running Apache and Passenger, and they're also running something called CGI Map, which we'll be coming back to later, uh, which handles some of the API requests. Everything other than API requests is handled by Apache and Passenger. And then at the very bottom, you'll see is the, the database server. That's actually two servers at the moment. Um, and also a file server that we use for holding all the uploaded GPX traces and user photos and things like that. So the database, all four point whatever terabytes of it, uh, there's, a, there's a, a user's table with various uh, auxiliary tables. This is just a, a quick overview of, of the schema. All the geodata, the good stuff. So the change sets, uh, and then the, the nodes, both the, what the, the current nodes, which is the, the, the live version, and nodes, which is the historical versions of the data. That's repeated for the other types. Uh, and then we have the GPS data in some other tables. Uh, Yes, the, the names there are not quite consistent. You see, we got, can't decide whether it's GPX or GPS, but this is all historical, I'm afraid. And finally, we have the, the notes, uh, which is one, one of the newer features. Um, and then there are various extra tables on top of all this for diary entries, for user-to-user -user messages, and for all the other stuff that goes on behind the scenes. So the main code that sits behind the site is the Rails port. It's a slightly odd name, I'll grant you. Uh, it's basically because uh, we, we switched from the previous code, the new code was written in Rails, it became known as the Rails port, and that kind of stuck, and eight years later we're still calling it that. You'll find it on GitHub. Find a problem, open an issue, even better, write some code, open a pull, very welcome. It includes an implementation of the API as well as the uh, user-facing web pages that you'll see when you, when you go to it in your browser. But that implementation of the API is not actually what we use for all the, code, all the calls on the live site. There's an alternative implementation, which I referred to just before, called CGI Map. It only implements part of the API, but the parts of it that it does implement, we use it in production for those parts. We'll talk more about that in a bit. So, getting started if you want to work on the website. First thing to do, check out the code. And then, a little bit of reading. Start with that one. That'll tell you how to install um, the site, how to create the database, and start getting things set up. Then the second one. This covers some, some um, slightly more esoteric things that you might need if you want to work on particular parts of the, um, of the code. And finally, this one, which talks about how we work. A lot of this is stuff I'm going to talk about in a minute, but it's, it's just kind of things to think, keep in mind while you're working on the code. Alternatively, read that one. If you're familiar with Vagrant, you can just do a uh, Vagrant up and get yourself a Vagrant machine running the code, and away you go. That will set up the database and everything for you. And it might be easier, especially if you're used to that. Once you've done that, if you're looking for something to do, we have issues. 
We have quite a lot of issues. There's just, just a few of them there. Go and have a look on GitHub. You'll find them all. So the structure of the code, it's, it's standard Rails. So it's a, a basic uh, MVC architecture. So we have the, the models, which are basically uh, one class for each, data, each type of data. They basically map one-to-one -to, -one to the tables in the database that I talked about before. And in the views, these are the, the templates of the, the web pages that the user sees. These are ERB templates, so they're a mixture of HTML and Ruby code to insert dynamic pieces um, depending on the, the page that you're looking at. And then stitching all that together is the, the controllers which handle, so each user request will hit a particular controller method which will typically fish some database out, data out of the database and pass that to the view which will then render back to you. This is particularly for the, the web pages, the, the way the API calls work that are implemented in the Rails code is slightly different because we're not sending HTML back to the user. Then there's also client-side code. That's all JavaScript, obviously, using jQuery. You'll find it there. These are, these are all the, the, the paths in the, in the repository that you'll see. And the style sheets, which have all the control for the, the client-side rendering of the views and how, how it's all styled when the user sees it. All the text that the user is seeing needs to be translatable. So if you're adding user visible strings, don't put the string in the code. Put the string in that file there. Only in the English file, please. Um, the translation is all done later using Translate Wiki, so we just put them in the English file to start with. Um, and then reference those in the code. With the, There's a little function called T that you just give it the resource ID and it will pull it out of that file. So the models, as I said, there's one class per table. Mostly the names of the, the Ruby class will match the name of the database table, except when they don't. So the, the node class actually is the current nodes table, so that's the, the current version of any given node. And the old node class is the nodes table. Yes, okay. Um, so that, that has one record for every version. So the, the, the most recent version in the nodes table will duplicate the version in the current nodes table. This is not perhaps the best design, but... And you'll find the same thing for ways and relations. And then again with traces, it's all a bit confused. So trace is GPX files, trace tag is GPX file tags, trace point is GPS points. Yeah, this is mostly a question of history and the fact that when we, the database schema, or at least the older tables, comes from the previous version of the code, and when, it was, when the Rails port was written around that, the schema is not necessarily match what Rails would normally really like to do. So, once you've written some code, please run raw style checkers on it. We, we have Rubocop set up for the Ruby. We have uh, JS hint set up for the JavaScript. So you can run, run, run whatever of those is, is relevant for whatever you've done and, and just see what it points out. Even more important, run the tests. Run rake test, it'll run all the tests for the Ruby code. Unfortunately, we don't have much in the way of tests for the JavaScript code at the moment. I'm, I'm hoping to change that. I have started working on, uh, on some tests. Um, but yes, we have... Travis will run. When you, if, you, if you send us a pull request, Travis will run the tests and the, and the style checking, and it will tell us. So please do. And then once Travis has finished, coveralls will tell us what the coverage is like. We have 95% coverage for the Ruby code at the moment, and we quite like to keep it that way. So if, if you're writing new code, please write some tests for it on the, on the server side with the Ruby code. And we'll, we'll find out if you don't, because cover rules will tell us when you open the PR. So when your change is ready, open a pull request. That will send an uh, email to the, the Rails dev mailing list, where the development the people that are working on this hang out and, and we'll see it. So the, the, the first thing that we're usually going to look at is the UI and, and just how it behaves from a user point of view rather than the, the code. And just looking at whether, whether it's right, whether there's design changes, whether there's a better way something could be done, whether it fits into the site. When we're happy with that, then and we'll usually move on and, and look at the actual code, just to see whether the implementation is right. Um, just whether it fits in with, with the way we usually do things, but also sometimes you can write something which works fine in your test instance with half a dozen records, but we have to worry about what's going to happen when you put it on the live database with tens of thousands or tens of millions of records. Sometimes you have to think about what the performance issues are going to be. 
If it's a particularly big change, then we, we may well set it up. We have uh, a dev server and we have a series of test instances. We may put it up there and then we can, uh, we can show that to people and say to people, you can go here, you can play with an actual running instance um, and, and, and see how it feels, see whether there's things that are an issue. Indeed, if you've made a change and you, and you want one of these set up, please just let us know. Um, all, all I basically need is, is a, a URL for a Git repository and the name of the branch you want and I can set that up and it'll appear on there and it'll be a test instance that anybody can play with. So the second part of the story, as I was saying, is, is this thing called CGI map. So this is a C++ implementation of currently a part of the API. It, it achieves better performance than the, the Ruby code. The Rails is not really designed for operating on large quantities of data because it's creating Ruby objects for every single database record that you read. So we can get better performance both because we can exactly customize the SQL queries that we're using and we can also uh, reduce the memory because we're, we're, we can do things in a much more compact way and we can try and stream data directly out to the client rather than creating lots of in-memory objects and it's just generally much, much more efficient. So currently it handles the, the main map call. Obviously this is the thing in particular which produces large amounts of data to send back to the client. So this, is, this was the very first thing that it did. It's why it has its name because it was just handling the map call. Since then it's been extended so it now does the single node way in relation. So if you just ask for the data for a particular object, you'll get that. It also does multiple ones. So if you ask for the data for a whole list of nodes or ways, you'll get those back. Uh, and, and also the, what we call the full calls. So you can ask for a way or a relation with all their child objects. So you'll get all the nodes that are part of the way or all the nodes and ways that are part of the relation. So it does all those. We, 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 want, to, we want to go further. I mean, ideally, eventually, this will handle everything. I think the next targets are probably the, the history calls. So these are the calls which will give you all the versions that have ever existed of a particular node or way or relation. Uh, and also the, the change set calls, which will download the metadata for a change set or indeed the whole of the data for a change set in OSM change format. Uh, currently, this all runs as a separate daemon. This is called via fast CGI on the, the back-end machines. The, the, the core code from it has now been split into a library. Um, so the, the, the daemon is now just a wrapper around that library. And the, the goal is now to write a gem that also sits around the library, which allows us to call directly into this code from the Rails code so that we will be able to use the same code basically to implement the API in Rails as we used to implement it in CGI map which means we won't have to implement everything twice. Because at the moment, we're, we're kind of reluctant to add new API calls in CGI map unless they're also in the, the Rails code because it makes it that much more complicated for people to work on, on things. So the other thing that we're, that's kind of being worked on in this direction is CGI map actually supports JSON output. Currently, the API is entirely XML. CGI map supports JSON output for the calls which it knows how to handle. That is not currently enabled on the production site because we don't want to do that until we have reasonably complete coverage of the API in JSON. So that, again, is another goal. Get the whole API in CGI map, get Rails using that, and then we can turn on JSON. So if you want something to work on, this is a really good place. Matt will love to hear from you. He's not here, but I can put you in touch with him. So again, with style, CGI map, it's, I say it's all C++. It's formatted in the LLVM style. Uses, you, you can use Clang format. You'll have to run um, the configure with that switch to get the Clang formatting, and then you can just run make. Unfortunately, it does need Clang 3.6 at the moment. Um, so you, you need to be reasonably up to date. Again, it does have tests. You can run all those with make check. You do need to have a Postgres server running for that to work. Travis, not actually quite there yet, but hopefully coming real soon. I have actually, the, the, the configuration is there. Matt merged it last week, but we haven't actually got it enabled yet. There's a slight hitch on that. So, none of this happens by magic. And uh, this, is, this is where we need you to get involved. Because many of the people that are working on this, like me, are also trying to keep the servers running. And this is, I, I, I don't get much time these days to actually write new features on the website. I kind of, I, I work on reviewing other people's stuff and merging it. I don't do a huge amount. I do a few bug fixes and 
I've done a bit more recently. I've been working on the tests a lot. So, get involved. If you're, if you're planning on doing something big, then, or if you just want some advice, then please come and talk to us. Lots of contact points there. Um, especially if you're doing something big, because we, we may know of other people that are working in that area and we, we can avoid conflicts. We may know of, we may have ideas about the way that something, a particular thing should work. Many of the things that you'll probably think of doing are things that people have thought about before and it's not that we don't want to do them, it's just that we haven't had the time. So there may well be people who've already thought about these things and, and have um, advice that, you know, that they, can, they can offer you. Um, if you have questions, then I can take questions now or you can find me around. I'm going to be around all weekend. I'm going to be at the Hack Day on Monday. If you want to hack on this, come along to the Hack Day. Find me if you want help. I can, I can help, you through, help you through things, see what we can get going. Um, I'll say, if you want to work on CGI map, then um, Matt Amos is really the person to talk to um, who isn't here, but I can put you in contact with him. Um, so, I think that's it. Any questions? I guess uh, so the question was, well, what's the best way to su support me? Well, what, what do I need? Um, people, mostly, really. It's, it's, it's yeah, pe people, people to do things. Um, and, you know, get, get, get involved by doing small things, by, by working on this, maybe. And, and if, if, you're, if you're good, then we'll, we'll, we'll probably start to drag you in and get you to do more things. Um, it, it's one of those things, it's very hard because it's such a big project, you, it's very hard to kind of take somebody and kind of dump them in at the top. You have to kind of bring them up from the, from the bottom and, and uh, yeah. Anybody else? Yes, Grant. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's my colleague, he's, he's talking next. So if you, if you want to know about um, how we actually run the service that, that take care of all this, stay right in here and, and Grant will talk to you next. So I just want to say, Tom is an absolutely vital person behind the project. At least half of the code of the website is personally written by Tom. And at close to half. You, you counted, did you? <laughs> yeah. And he does an amazing job. He fixes so many of the bugs. He gets so many of the new features done. He really deserves our thanks. So. Is anybody else? Oh, well, yes, there's a hack day on Monday. The details are on the website. Um, yes, come along, hack on something. Question: uh, What? Split. Sorry. Split. Oh well, obviously yes. Working on on the the CGI map stuff that I was talking about would, would be an excellent place um, to to help us complete the CGI map um, and and get that integrated into the Ruby code. So we've only got one API implementation, and then we can we can get some of this JSON stuff, for example, which people would really, really, really like to have. Um, yeah, and, and incidentally, in the absence of Matt, Mr. Norman there is probably the best person to talk to about CGI map. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, well, the, the, yes, the, we, we actually have a GSOC student working. He was saying there's a, the, the issue of reporting um, diary entries and user descriptions and stuff that are basically spammy or otherwise problematic. We actually have a GSOC student working on that uh, at the moment. So there should be something going up. Probably there'll be a test website, like I was talking about there, going up in the next few days. I was talking to Serge about it on Thursday evening. Um, so yeah, he was saying he's going to ask me to do that very shortly.
Any more? Any more? Right, okay.